If you've ever wanted to try out DTF printing, but you don't have a DTF printer and you don't have a sublimation printer, this video is for you because I'm gonna show you how to get good quality DTF prints with an inkjet printer. And stay till the end of this video for a bonus tip on how to get extra longevity out of your inkjet printed DTF designs. Okay, so this video is kind of the culmination of a series of videos where we've tested different styles of DTF printing with sublimation, with inkjet printers. We've tried different hacks that people say improve your design or make it last longer or go better in the wash. And we've really found the best ways to DTF print with an inkjet printer at this point. So this video is gonna go through the ultimate guide for how to do this with an inkjet printer and do it successfully. So let's jump right into supplies and then let's make our tote bag. So the first thing you're gonna need is a blank. And today we're gonna to be using a tote bag. You do wanna make sure yours is 100% cotton. Make sure it's 100% cotton. And I would really recommend doing it on something like a tote bag. We'll explain why throughout the video, but that's what you should use for this project. Then you're also gonna need DTF transfer film. This is the brand that I'm using today. So this is Sendale Premium DTF transfer film. Um, you can see when you look at each individual piece, let me hold it up to this camera right here, you have kind of a matte side and then you also have kind of like a glossy side over here. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna print on the matte side. So go ahead and check your printer's settings so that you know which way to feed your paper in so that it actually prints on the matte side. That's gonna be really important here in just a second. And then you're also gonna need transfer powder. I'm using this Godora, Codora. I'm using this Godora <laughs> powder, and this is really important to the process. This is kind of what makes it a DTF print um, along with the transfer film. So that is a really important piece of this. And then you're also just gonna need a heat press and an inkjet printer. Okay, so I'm gonna set our tote bag kind of behind me here because we are gonna get on the computer and we're gonna get our design set up. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you is the design that we're actually gonna be using today. It's this Chasing That Scholastic Book Fair High PNG. We're gonna put it on our tote bag. I'm very excited about it. I've already downloaded it, so I'm actually just gonna pull up my finder here and I'm gonna grab the zip file. You can unzip a zip file just by double clicking it. So I've done that to open it up and then I'm gonna double click again to open my folder. Now there is a distressed version of this and a regular. So we're gonna look at both of them and see which one we like better. I'm just gonna double click them both. What is this one? Oh, that's the sticker. Very cool. Okay, I love that the seller, first of all, has a lot of options for this design. I think that's really cool. Um, this is included with a plus membership. So if you're unfamiliar with our plus memberships at Design Bundles, I highly recommend checking them out. You get so many included SVG cut files and sublimation files, just like this one. You also get access to a lot of really cool software like Illustrate AI um, and Pixescape that helps you edit your designs, create SVGs, create stickers. It's incredible. Definitely, definitely check it out if you haven't already. This one is included in a plus membership. So had to tell you about that, but I'm trying to decide between the white and the black here. I think it's maybe best if we go with this black one since our tote bag is so fair. So I'm gonna X that out. And actually, since we're just printing on a full sheet of paper, I'm not even gonna put this in any additional software. I'm literally just gonna print it straight from here because we really want it to fill as much of that eight and a half by 11 film as we possibly can. So. All I'm gonna do though is mirror it first because we do need to mirror our design. And to do that, I just need to click tools and then I can flip horizontally right here. And when you do that, it's gonna mirror your design and that's exactly what you need to do to print on DTF film. So this is ready to print. We really don't need to do anything else. I'm just gonna select file and print. And I'm going to make sure it's filling up the whole sheet there. It looks like it really is. It's gonna print the entire image. It's gonna fill the paper. It looks wonderful. The correct printer is selected. I do wanna print in color. All of my settings look correct. Um, I do wanna make sure to mention the media and quality section because this is kind of a point of dissension amongst people who print DTF on inkjet printers. In previous videos, we've explored selecting the auto paper type versus the glossy paper type. 
There was some rumors circulating that if you select glossy, your printer, it, it has an easier time kind of gripping this really like thin material and pulling it through. I've found that if you just stack up some regular paper underneath your um, DTF film, it will still grip it just fine. I wouldn't put one of these just in by itself because your rollers may have trouble grabbing it. Um, but actually selecting photo glossy paper or specialty paper glossy, we have found has a little bit of a worse result in the printing quality. So I would recommend selecting auto and then just make sure you have some regular paper underneath and that your DTF film is stacked pretty high in your tray and you should have no problem. Okay, let's go over to the printer and get this loaded in and then we are ready to print this. So I'm just gonna open up my tray right here. There's nothing in it right now, but you can see I'm just gonna take like a decent amount of paper here and go ahead and stick it in the tray. And then I'm gonna take my film and because my tray feeds upside down, I actually wanna put it in glossy side up so that when it feeds into the printer, it will feed it up and out the mat side. So I'm gonna slide it in glossy side up and just open my little tray here and then we are ready to press print. So I'm gonna go ahead and press print and let's see how it comes out. Now, I do wanna tell you that you wanna go ahead and have your DTF powder ready to go because as soon as this prints, we're gonna to wanna to get the powder on it before that ink dries. So we are ready to press print. Let's get our film ready though. I should probably get like a towel underneath this so we don't get powder everywhere. <laughs> we wanna save all that good powder that gets um, that becomes excess and use it because this stuff is not cheap. So we wanna use as much as we possibly can over again. Um, I'm just gonna find something to lay down and then we should be good to go. So I'm actually just gonna lay down some paper towels. <laughs> it's like not very official, but that is okay. Um, we just want something that can kind of catch the excess powder as we like tap it off so that we can save it and put it back in the jar. So. Now that we have this ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and press print and we're gonna be a little bit snappy getting our, our um, powder onto our transfer. Looks like it's doing a great job. It looks so vibrant, I love it. Okay, she's done. And then we're just gonna try to be pretty quick here. We're just gonna get a little scoop of it. A little does go a long way, but you wanna make sure you coat. And then we are literally just gonna take this and we are just gonna lift it up and make sure it's getting good and coated there. And it looks like it's really doing a good job. We just wanna make sure all that ink gets powder on it. So I'm actually gonna take another scoop here. We're gonna do it one more time. Just make sure it really gets covered. Looks like that first scoop did a pretty good job, but I like to be better safe than sorry. <laughs> so we're just gonna take it let it kind of run down the edges here, letting it get really good on this whole design. Okay, that looks really nice. You can see it looks pretty well coated there. Looks like it did a great job. So now I'm just gonna set this off to the side. Oops, I accidentally touched a little piece of it. You can really see where I touched it there at the top, maybe you can't see it, but there's a clearly a spot where I touched it and I'm literally gonna use my hand, which I don't recommend doing, but I'm doing it. Um, and then be careful not to touch your design because you don't wanna remove that powder. But if you look up close here, you can see, my hands are kind of shaky, sorry, it's because this film is like so lightweight and you don't wanna touch your ink. But if you look at it like this, you can really see that that powder is doing a great job coating the ink. So that's really good. You want that little crystalline, like you want it to look like you don't see shiny ink, you just see that powder. And if that's what you're seeing, then you are really good to go. You can set it off to the side and then here's where you can use your paper towel or whatever you've been using to try to save some of that powder and get it back in your jar. Okay, our heat press is heating up back there to 385 degrees. We are actually gonna press it for 40 seconds, not 30 seconds. So I'm about to change that on the timer in just a second. But I wanted to jump on here and go over a couple hacks that have been circulating around DTF printing with inkjet printers. We did test them in a previous video and in this video is all about the best ways to do this. So I want to debunk those really quickly. There is a hack going around saying that if you preheat your um, DTF transfer and then give it a second coating of the powder before pressing, you get better results. We tested that, 
That is not the case. It's actually the opposite of the case and it seems to give worse results. So we're gonna recommend one coating. Don't do that second coating. Um, and in a previous video, we also tested giving the um, DTF transfer a second press on our blank. Supposedly that just kind of helps it adhere better. But again, when we tested that, we actually got worse results. So we're gonna recommend one press for 40 seconds at 385 degrees with a protectant on top and that seems to be kind of the gold standard. So that's what I'm gonna recommend. And this is gonna be a cool peel. So we're gonna press it with our protective covering and then let it sit until it is completely cool. But as soon as this preheats, the first thing we're gonna do is preheat our transfer. So our steps we have left are preheat the transfer, press with a protective covering, wait to cool peel, and then peel it off. So the next thing we're gonna do is heat up our heat press and you want it at 385 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and get that selected. And we are gonna be pressing this for, I'm gonna go ahead and set it at 30 seconds, but I'm gonna double check that time before we actually press here in a minute. So go ahead and let your heat press heat up. And if you have like a cushion inside it, I would go ahead and remove that because we are gonna to want to use this bottom plate to preheat our DTF transfer here in just a minute. So go ahead and let that be preheating. Check your heat press if you use one like me to make sure you've got enough force on that bottom plate. That looks pretty good. Might make it a little bit. I'm gonna lower it just a bit. That's better. Make sure you've got good pressure on that lower plate. Okay, so this is just about heated up. And what I'm actually gonna do is go ahead and press it all the way down because even while it's preheating, I really just wanna heat up this bottom plate down here because I'm gonna use it to preheat my transfer in a second. So I'm gonna let it run for 30 seconds, just preheating that bottom plate. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our transfer on here and let it hover to preheat it. You can see it's gonna lose heat pretty quickly doing this. That is okay, don't stress about it. As soon as you pick it up, it's gonna start gaining heat again. And this is still plenty hot to preheat our transfer. So we're gonna let that sit. We're gonna let it start heating up. It's gonna keep losing heat for a second, but it will start heating back up. And we're gonna preheat our transfer. So we're gonna go ahead and lay this down, powder side up on our bottom plate here, which we just preheated. Watch your fingers if you don't have a protective glove on like me. And then we're not gonna press our heat press all the way down. We're actually just going to hover it over the top here just barely floating above our protective, um, sorry, just barely floating above our DTF transfer. We really are just trying to heat it up and activate the ink. We're gonna do that for 30 seconds. Once that's done, we're just going to gently, should be pretty warm, slide it away here. Now we are going to pre-press our tote bag so I'm just going to slide my tote bag in here right on that press. I haven't even taken the tag off of it yet. <laughs> and I'm going to swivel it around and go ahead and pre-press my tote bag for 40 seconds to make sure it gets good and heated up. All right, so I'm just gonna move this out of the way here. Don't wanna melt my tumbler. And then I'm just gonna grab my sheet we're gonna flip it over and go ahead and lay it right where it needs to go on the middle of our tote bag. Now you can use heat tape for this if you want. I'm just gonna put my protective coating directly on top. It seems like it's gonna stick pretty well. And then again, we're gonna press this for 40 seconds. We wanna apply good, even pressure. So if you're using a handheld press today, just be sure that you're applying firm, even pressure for the whole 40 seconds. All right, we have reached the end here. So I'm just gonna slide this protective covering off without pulling off my transfer. We do wanna wait for a cool peel. So I'm just gonna gently remove the tote bag and bring it back over to my desk without burning my hand. Okay, friends, so we're waiting to cool peel. I must admit that I am dying to see if this worked. It's feeling like, we'll have to see. Kind of pressing it down a little bit because I feel like it's, 
it's worrying me <laughs> that it's not gonna work. I wonder if I... Okay, it is working, but it is pulling like quite a bit up with it. That's kind of stressing me out. I'm just gonna go for it and we may have to do this video again. Ah, and it is like cool. Like it is allegedly like as cool as it's gonna get. <gasps> okay. We have some like spots down here that are kinda, you can see there's kind of some spots that are, leave a little bit to be desired. I feel like I give this like a seven out of 10. So we did have some peeling, we did have some pulling. If you have ideas about that in the comments, please leave them and I'm totally willing to try this again. I'm honestly kind of wondering if it's struggling because this is 100% cotton canvas and maybe it has a harder time gripping. So I think next time we do this, let's try it on just 100% cotton, period, end of story, and see if we get a better result. I know that canvas is finicky. So I think we try this on something else next time, but for printing with an inkjet printer, using DTF, using our transfer powder, this is truly awesome. I cannot believe it worked this well. <laughs> I mean, it actually looks really nice. We just have a few little errors right here that I'm gonna work out the kinks for and we'll do this video again. I did promise you a bonus tip. So your bonus tip is this. These do not wash great. Um, if you're going to be using an inkjet printer with your DTF, make sure you do it on something that's not gonna need to be washed frequently, like a tote, like a um, hand, like a decorative towel or something like that. I wouldn't necessarily do this on a t-shirt. Um, some people have great success with it. I feel like if you're gonna sell that product, it may be a little finicky, it may be a little challenging. Washing does tend to wear them down. If you have tips for DTF printing, leave them in the comments. If you wanna know more about DTF printing, leave it in the comments. We're definitely gonna do a follow-up video on this. I wanna try to perfect this because Again, I am shook with the results. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We will see you here next week. Happy crafting, friends.